Namaste. Welcome to the next video of Machine Learning Practice Course. In this video, we'll be using perceptron model for image classification. Specifically, we are given an image of a digit and we are required to predict the digit present in the image. This is an instance of a multi-class classification problem. There are 10 digits in total. So in a given image, there is a single digit present and we have to predict which one of the 10 digits are present in that image. Initially, we will solve this problem as a binary classification problem and later solve a complete multi-class classification problem. We will be recording this collab in two parts. In the first part, we will be recording the binary classification problem and in the second part, we will be recording the multi-class classification problem. So let's begin. So the first step will import all necessary packages for the classification problem. We need to import classes and utilities from sklearn. So we are going to import a perceptron classifier from sklearn.linear underscore model. We'll also import a dummy classifier as a baseline classifier. Then there are other utilities like pipeline are also imported. We are also importing minmax scalar as a preprocessing as a preprocessing module. And dataset will be loaded from fetch underscore open ml library. We are also importing bunch of metrics and model selection utilities. So we are going to use perceptron classifier to classify given image of a digit. So in the first part of the problem, we are going to solve this problem as a binary classification problem. So for that, what we'll do is we will check whether the given image is that of digit zero or not. So as a first step, we need to create a data set that contains collection of image of digit written by human. And then each image should be also labeled properly. And you can imagine that this is a challenging task and also a time consuming one. However, we have a standard benchmark called MNIST dataset and we'll be using the MNIST dataset. So MNIST dataset has an image of a digit and along with the label of the digit present in that image. So we'll be fetching the MNIST dataset from, uh, from fetch underscore open ML. So there is MNIST underscore 784 dataset and we'll be returning MNIST dataset in form of a feature vector and label. So you can see that there are 70,000 total samples in MNIST dataset and each image comes with 784 feature. So what happens is each image is present as a 28 by 28 grid and if you multiply 28 with itself or the square of 28 it is 784. So each feature represent a value in the pixel and the minimum value is 0 and maximum value is 255. The total number of classes are 10 and labels are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. So there are, there are 10 such labels that are, that are uh, present in this data set. Next, we will perform feature preprocessing or rather the feature normalization on the input feature matrix. For that, we will make use of min max scalar. So we instantiate an object of min max scalar and call fit underscore transform method on the min max scalar object by passing the, by passing the feature matrix to it. So after performing the min max scaling, the minimum value of the feature is 0 and maximum value is 1. So we manage to transform the values from 0 to 255 to 0 to 1. 
let us pick up a few images and display them along with their labels. So each image is stacked as a row of uh, size 1 by 784. So what we'll do is we'll first reshape, uh, reshape each image into a matrix of size 28 by 28 and display them. So here there are uh, 9 images that are selected and displayed on the screen. So you can see that this is the image of 110 digit 5, 110 digit 5, this is 0, this is 4 and you can also see the label for this particular image. So this image is what is the input and this is a label that we are supposed to predict by processing this image through perceptron classifier. You can, you can see that there is some variation in the way digits are written. So here digit 1 is repeated. So there are three instances of digit 1 and you can see that there is slight variation in the way 1 is written. Next we will split the data into training and test set. So what we will do is we will set aside 60,000 images for training and 10,000 images for test. Since the data is already randomly shuffled, we need not shuffle it again. And here we are using a manual method of, uh, of the splitting. So you can also use train underscore test underscore split method on this data set to obtain training and test splits. We will also check if our data set is balanced or imbalanced. So for that, what we do is we plot the distribution of samples in each class. So we have 10 different classes and you can see that roughly there are about 6000 samples in each class. Let's solve a binary classification problem for detecting a zero digit. So we call it as a zero detector. So in order to in order to train a model for zero detector, we need to first modify our labels. Since the original label vector contains 10 classes, we need to modify it to, to two classes. One is the label 0 which will be changed to 1 and all other labels will be changed to minus 1. So we will have two labels plus 1 and minus 1. So you can see that wherever we have a uh, digit 0, the label is 1 and wherever there is a non-zero digit, the label is minus 1. So you can see here, this is the image of digit 5 and label is minus 1. For image of digit 4, label is also minus 1 and so on. First, we will build a baseline model and the simplest baseline model is to assign the label of the majority class to each example. So we can use dummy classifier with strategy equal to most frequent. So what will happen is that the label that is most frequent in the training data will be applied to each training example. So you can see that with that we get the training and test accuracy of 0.9. So we are 90% accurate by using the most frequent label. So here in this case there are 54,000 samples that are labeled with minus 1 and minus 1 is the most frequent label. So if we, imp if we assign the label minus 1 to each example we get 90% accuracy. And you can see that uh, this is not really a good measure because we are not able to detect zeros by utilizing by using this particular strategy. So you can conclude that or you can again see that accuracy is not a very good measure at least in this case. Now what we'll do is we'll use perceptron for, for binary classification. Let's quickly recap the 
concepts of perceptron. So in perceptron, we have training data consisting of feature matrix and a label vector. And the label is a discrete quantity from a finite set. And here the features are pixel values. So the perceptron model, we first perform the linear combination of weights and the features and then pass it through a nonlinear activation function. And this nonlinear activation function in case of perceptron is based on the sign of the linear combination. If the linear combination is positive, is greater than or equal to zero, then we assign the label of plus one. Otherwise, we assign a label of minus one. So if the linear combination is a negative number, we assign the label of minus one. Then we have a perceptron loss, which is max of minus W transpose x, y and 0. So the max of these quantities is assigned as a loss for ith example. And we have a perceptron update rule as a perceptron learning algorithm. So we change the weight of the, the training example if it is incorrectly classified in case of perceptron. So if our examples are linearly separable, then that leads to convergence of the perceptron algorithm and zero training loss. Otherwise, perceptron algorithm oscillates. Let's look at the sklearn implementation of perceptron. So perceptron is implemented in sklearn.linear underscore model module and there is a perceptron API. It has various, uh, it has got various parameters like penalty, uh, alpha, L1 ratio, fit underscore intercept, max underscore writer, tolerance, shuffle, verbose, ETA0, n jobs, random states, early stopping, validation fraction, number of iteration, no change, class weight and warm start. So you might recall a lot of these parameters from HDD, right? So tolerance, ETA zero, early stopping, n iter no change. These are parameters that we have also seen in HDD classifier as well as HDD regressors. So internally, this particular API calls hinge zero, it uses a hinge loss with zero as a threshold and it uses SGD to update the weights. Alternatively, we can also use SGD classifier with loss equal to perceptron to build a perceptron model. So let's create an instance of a perceptron model. So we create a perceptron model with maximum iteration set to 100 and random state set to uh, 1729. In order to train the perceptron algorithm, we use the fit method and send a feature matrix and a label vector. Since we are solving a zero detector problem, we have a modified label vector as input to the perceptron. Once the perceptron model is trained, we can, we can predict labels and on the training set, we get accuracy of 0.99. Whereas on the test set, we get accuracy of 0.98, which is slightly lower than the training accuracy, but nevertheless, they are comparable. So what we'll do is we will now uh, draw images or plot images and we'll also, uh, we'll also specify what is the prediction for each of the image. So here you can see that the image is 7 and the prediction is minus 1 which is the correct prediction. This is the image of 0 and prediction is 1 which is also a correct prediction. And 
and you can see that most of the images in this display are correctly predicted. So you can see that various types of zeros are correctly predicted or are correctly detected by the perceptron algorithm. So there are about 91% images are correctly classified. So let's try to predict or let's try to plot confusion matrix of uh, based on the, the prediction. So here we are plotting a confusion matrix on the training set. And here you can see that 53,955 examples are correctly classified as minus 1 and 5500 uh, 5502 examples are correctly classified to be in class 1. Whereas the off diagonal entries signify the digits that are incorrectly classified. These are the digits which were actually minus 1 but they are predicted to be plus 1 and 421 digits which are actually plus 1 are predicted to be minus 1. Let's calculate precision and recall from the confusion matrix and here you can see that we have precision of 0.97 and recall of 0.92. In order to get more robust prediction, we will train the perceptron classifier in a cross validated manner. So we make use of cross underscore validate function, supply the perceptron estimator along with the feature matrix and the label vector. We specify number of uh, folds for cross validation equal to 5. And once it was trained through cross validation, you can see that we got five different uh, perceptron algorithms or five different perceptron instances and each one of them results into slightly different uh, precision and recall on the test sets. And we can also look at the F1 score which is combination of precision and recall. So the first perceptron uh, model seems to uh, be getting us the best F1 score of 0.95. So we can also compute the, the average and the standard deviation for each of these uh, metrics. So that helps us to understand how uh, what is the uh, what is the variation in the performance of different perceptron models that we train through cross validation. So you can see that the standard deviation is pretty pretty small and most of the perceptron algorithm have more or less very similar performance. So we, got, we get the average precision of 0.96, recall of 0.92 and average F1 score of 0.94. As you can see that the first estimator has got the best F1 score and we use that estimator to plot the confusion matrix. We can make use of cross val predict function in order to get a prediction for each example when it was part of the test set. And we, with that, we got a confusion matrix on the full on, on the full set. Here you can see that the, the precision we achieve precision of 0.96, recall of 0.92, and overall F1 score of 0.94.
So alternatively, we can also use the classification underscore report function in order to get precision recall and F1 score for both the classes. We also get other um, other metrics like accuracy and uh, ma uh, macro average and weighted average accuracy based on uh, the number of examples in each class. So you can see that for the negative class precision is 0.99 and recall is 1 whereas for the positive class the precision is 0.96 and recall is 0.92. So let's try to look at the, the trade-off between precision and recall. So if we increase precision, there is a drop in recall and vice versa. So here in order to, uh, in order to study the trade-off between precision and recall, instead of getting the prediction, we are getting the values uh, from the decision function. So these are the values of the linear combination before applying a non-linear decision function on it. So we get values which are uh, the real, which are real numbers, and you can see that there are uh, we have lot many negative examples in our in our training data set. Hence, uh, there are lot more negative values uh, that we obtain through decision function, and small number of positive values, and those mostly corresponds to the positive class. Now what we'll do is we'll vary the we'll vary the threshold. We will vary the decision function threshold, and uh, for each threshold, we'll calculate precision and recall, and then we then we will uh, plot that precision and recall in what is called as PR curve. So we have precision underscore recall underscore curve function in a scalar metric that helps us to get the PR curve. But the way that is done is by changing the threshold and for every threshold we calculate precision recall values. You can see the relationship between precision recall more clearly in this particular graph. So you can see that as the threshold goes up precision tends to increase and recall tends to decrease. So there is a there is an inverse relationship or there is a trade-off between precision and recall. So if we use a zero threshold, we have a precision of 0.978. Alternatively, we can also plot what is called as ROC curve that has got false positive rate on x-axis and true positive rate on the y-axis. So the process is exactly the same. We have a different threshold on the decision function and for each threshold we calculate false positive rate and true positive rate and then plot them in the ROC curve. So ideal ROC curve should be what you are seeing on, on your screen. So this is an ideal ROC curve because we are getting very good accuracy numbers on both the classes. And we calculate quantity like area under the ROC curve as a major of how good is the ROC curve. Finally, let's look at warm start and cold start. So whenever we call the, the fit method on, on the perceptron uh, estimator, it basically um, start afresh. It, it initializes the parameter to some values and start the training from, from scratch. So if we use warm start instead by setting the warm start equal to true in the, uh, in, in the constructor of the perceptron object, what happens is whenever we set warm start equal to true, the previous, the weights obtained from the previous run of perceptron are used uh, for to initialize uh, the new run. So every new run is uh, in every new run the weights are initialized to the weights obtained in the previous run. So that helps us in speeding up the training. 
and uh, the warm start is also useful if we are doing training in batches where we do a training on a batch we store the weights and next time when we uh, got another batch or when we got um, resources available for training we can start perceptron training from where we had left it so warm start will be very useful utility when we are training on large scale data so in this video we studied how to use perceptron classifier to detect uh, zero from the images of digits in the next video we'll try to solve a multi class classification problem with perceptron